Now there is a substitute instrument which looks like understanding but is not. Instead of generating an image out of my own memory bank, and sometimes it does require quite a lot of effort, and that's why I handed out that um, paper of George Orwell's, because he stresses the way it's necessary to try and get hold of an image that is truly faithful to what uh, you think and feel. So instead of generating an image out of my own experience, I summon an instrument which belongs to someone else. Now it may be an image that well, it came from Sigmund Freud, from Heinz Kohut, Melanie Klein, Wilfred Bion, Donald Winnicott, Francis Tustin, Fairburn, but if it doesn't apply to me, it is no good, whatever. The universal becomes a meaningless abstraction if it's filtered through someone else's lens, unless there is a bond of sympathy between oneself and that other figure. Um, so it's like uh, I quoted that bit about Freud with screen memories, so that actually is meaningful to me. But it may not be meaningful to you. And uh, there, may, there are many other things that Freud says that just, uh, to me, make no sense, whatever. So it's a question of uh, what it is that has a, a meaningfulness to oneself. So what I mean here is if the figure whose lens I'm looking through is giving expression to something that adequately frames my own experience, then it is fine, but not otherwise. What is certain that the whole range of thought of any particular clinician can never be fully faithful to my own experience. If that were the case, that other person would be me. And uh, so the, it's tremendously important that uh, one doesn't, as it were, uh, suppress or suppress one's own personal uh, judgment and inner imaginative experience under the uh, type of uh, directive of um, someone else's way of thinking of things, whether it's ho however great uh, the clinician might be. If the theoretical explanation has been expounded by someone because it is an expression of his own experience, and that is one that is shared by me in the same way as I have shared experience with that young teenage girl, then it will be genuine and it will be known by my patient. But if this is not the case, then my own personhood will have been buried, as it were, inside the corpse of some instrumental figure. There's been no sort of entrare or entering in its fashioning. And within the social sciences, there's a vast storehouse of such instruments, and it's easy for me to go to one of them and fashion my act of understanding, but it always remains pale and colorless act which deceives both me and the other, unless it expresses my own experience. It's the way in which one word, phrase, or sentence may sometimes express my experience accurately, whereas another uh, does not. I don't know if you've had the experience sometimes if I've been reading something and I've sort of understood something, and then I, I have to go back and find the actual phrase that, that somehow clicks something in the mind, whereas perhaps a whole lot of other sentences uh, don't. I, for instance, believe that it's a mistake uh, to insist on any of these figures, however great they are, in our trainings. What we need to try to do is to cultivate the capacity and courage to develop our own personal judgment. Very often, of course, we need to start by following in the steps of a master, like an apprentice. But the time comes when we need to break through uh, to our own persons and find our own uh, sort of images. I remember reading a biography of painter uh, Dufy, and I don't know if you're familiar with his paintings, but he painted sort of fairly colorful, cheerful sort of paintings. But he was in an atelier in Paris um, learning as a sort of an apprentice. And there was a, a woman model that they were all having to paint, and the woman had bright red hair, and he painted the painting in sort of bright colors and so on. 
And the, um, the master of the atelier came around behind him and said, no, no, you should have painted this in a dark type of mode. And Dufy said, I knew at that moment it was time to leave the atelier. Uh, and he went off, and, and you see from all his paintings that they're not in any way gloomy and dark. They're sort of bright and colorful and uh, cheerful. And so uh, we need to, as I say, exercise our own critical judgment for, of Freud, of Jung, Klein, Bion, Kohut, Winnicott, not one of these people is entirely right. And if you read them carefully, there always emerges uh, all sorts of contradictions. The reason I'm emphasizing this is that if your own personhood is smothered by the thinking of another, then we, in fact, are psychotic in the same way that the patient is psychotic, suppressed under uh, a type of uh, a group system. And someone asked me if I would uh, perhaps stress in this talk the fact that uh, that we all, Freud made the point that we've all got neurotic elements inside of ourselves, but we've also got this more primitive uh, uh, disturbances also. And we've all got uh, undeveloped uh, aspects that I've been talking about that, that require more development. And one only has to listen to um, any type of... Um, clinical discussions to realize how powerful superego uh, type of activity is in nearly all uh, psychotherapeutic groups. We are suffering, in fact, from the same condition as our own psychotic patient, only that it may look superficially all right, because uh, it has the official authentication of a, an admired authority, whether it's Freud or Bion or Cohort or any other analyst. We may even be madder than our patient, but it's hidden behind a respectable sort of iconostasis. Now, the question is, why do we often grab as our instrument something which is alien to our experience? And I think this is uh, because what Bion said, uh, there's a hatred in us of experience. And uh, what I was really in a way trying to stress when I quoted that bit from Tolstoy is that it's like when I had that moment of understanding with that um, young 15-year-old uh, girl, it, it opened me to an experience as well as her. Uh, and that can be something quite painful that one may, that tries to stop. Bion also says in that same passage where he says there's a there's a hatred of having to learn by experience and a lack of faith in the worth of such kind of learning. And the man I quoted uh, last week, that Christian existentialist philosopher Paul Tillich says, man is not equal to his own experience. It's quite a deep uh, thought that, I think. And he says, he, so he attempts to forget it. And um, uh, I've had uh, quite a few experiences in my life where some, there's been some quite vivid experience that someone has described to me, and I can think of a case so some year or two ago, and then later it's completely forgotten, and yet it was a very sort of vivid experience.